All right, guys, good morning. Welcome to Fishful Thinker. I'm Chad Lachance. If you're a fan of this show, you know right away this is Mr. Chris Johnson. Right here, Chris Johnson's been on the show with us before. We've caught pike. We've caught pike. We've caught smallmouth. You even caught like a 10 pound brown one time. Crappie. Big old crappies. Big crappies. Some other trout in the river. Yes. Now we're on a place that I've been wanting to film for a long time. We're on one of Colorado's most infamous state wildlife areas. We are in Echo Canyon Reservoir. It is September, middle of September. Yep. This place is famous for one reason. A mutual friend of ours by the name of Jared Edwards caught the state record largemouth bass out of here, 11 pounds, 6 ounces, six ounces. in Colorado. In Colorado. We're almost 9,000 feet in elevation, right? Mm -hmm. Or 8 something yeah, we're in elevation. In Pagosa Springs. Yeah, 8,000 plus feet in elevation, fishing for largemouth bass. Deep and clear, shallow and weedy. We did a quick lap around the lake, checking some stuff out, made some exploratory casts, didn't find anything we liked at that end, came up here into the shallow weeds. We're going to start our hunt here, guys. We're getting serious. So, Big largemouth, uh, they live here. What's your prediction? Can we catch a four pounder? I think we'll catch a four pounder. Can we catch a six pounder? Chances are good. I'm going eight pounder, so stay tuned guys, this should be fun. Fishful Thinker Television is brought to you by Sportsman's Warehouse, America's premier outfitter. Peterson Toyota and Toyota Trucks, moving forward. St. Croix Rod, best rods on earth. Berkeley. Catch more fish. Abu Garcia, for life. Camp Chef, the way to cook outdoors. And Colorado Parks and Wildlife. Definitely seeing some that big mat at the back. There looks pretty good. So right now I'm I think as far as top water, I'm just trying to do different retrieves. Um, right. Kind of a walk the dog, steady cadence, stopping. There's a little fish right behind me. Yeah, I was going to say, I just had one that studied my jerkbait real hard. He's like, oh, that's one of those new Berkeleys. But doing a lot of different types of presentations, finding out what these fish want up here. Do they want it fast? Do they want to pop? Do they want it slow? Do they want it walking? And until you can catch a couple, what do you say? <laughs> <One's> a... <laughs> That's mean. That's a mean and dirty trick. He ran up and he looked at it and just barely gave him a twitch and he's like, I'll take it. Yes, yeah, like I was saying, what do you say? One's, one's luck. One's a fluke, two's a theory, three's a pattern. There you go. So I'll just keep doing different techniques, different different cadences, different. Now, so let me ask you this: So, as a tournament angler, yes, do you you also base some of that on size of fish you're catching as well? Like in my case, I believe that we're I'll mix up to like catch a couple of fish that are of the right size range because these little guys could buy any number of things. Well, if I'm fishing a tournament, yeah, that one got it, but he's not even big enough to pull it underwater. <laughs> um, Generally speaking, if I can catch, if I can fish a bigger, the biggest, top, uh, if I'm on a topwater bite, if I can fish the biggest topwater bait that I can get and away with. And still get bites, and yeah. And still get bites. Yeah. What that eliminates as a tournament angler is a lot of little ones, a lot of bites like this. Um, but, you know, this, relatively speaking, is a pretty big sized popper. And they are eating this thing. And it's not much smaller than they are. They eat jerk baits too apparently. Yeah. <laughs> you got me down the grass. Oh look I got a giant compared to yours buddy. Look at this one. Uh-huh. I got a bluegill. It's a sunny. It's, it's a, a nice one. Geez it's a big old green sunfish. Holy schmoly that's a big green sunfish. <laughs> that's like a warm mouth almost. That's, like a, a, that's a green sunfish. Bass. That's the biggest green sunfish I've ever seen in my life. Look at that thing, guys. And it's got That's a big old show sunfish. These colors yeah, right look here. at the it's blue like, like and salt water. Yeah, those are cool. That's an old fish. See how his fins are kind of beat up and worn out and he's got all this color on I'm missing a whole whole fin. He's missing one. See that? Got him. Better one? No, I don't think so. Yeah. It's two pounds. Maybe Come bigger. over the grass. <laughs> That's why you need the heavy rope, guys. <laughs> I don't know what's in there at this point, guys. 
I'm pretty sure it's a fish. It's a better one. Yeah, uh, it ain't. It ain't much. I got more grass than <laughs> fish. That's for sure. There he goes. Oh, sorry. Oh man, dude, that's a lot of salad. Fishful Thinker Television is brought to you by Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. Evan Rood, spend more time on the water. Lawrence, find, navigate, dominate. Well, if there's any water up on that mat in here, there's gonna, oh my God, there just went a giant under the boat. Oh my God, dude, there was your eight or nine pounder just came from up here ahead of us and went right under the boat and he was casual until he got right there and then he took off. There we go. Holy, that seen. was one of the biggest largemouth I've ever had swim under the boat. <laughs> we've already seen some fish come out of right, really shallow water. And if that's a foot deep, you know they're gonna. Yeah. Maybe we should cut left and. Well, I'm looking, you don't, there's no break in the bottom all the way to the other side. I'm just gonna sneak us straight forward. I know we can make long throws into there. We're still marking two and a half feet below the trolling motor, so we got plenty in here. And that bottom, when I mean, you can see it's, yeah, let's throw a frog up in there real quick. They seem like they want the bait going slower than this buzz bait anyway. So a frog's probably a better call all the way around, like all the way back in here. Got him. <laughs> <laughs> That's another one. <laughs> that that had a little bit of weight to it. Come up on there, yeah. Once they dive into that stuff, it could be a 10 inch or a five yeah. pounder. You can't tell. I have no idea. That's a lot of grass to bring in. And I don't think he's giant, but that's a pretty fun way to catch fish. <laughs> Actually, we're gonna boat flip him. I don't want to like grass with my brand new boat, but we're gonna right this minute. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. <laughs> he looked a lot bigger when he... Uh, yeah, when he swallowed that thing. Yeah, this grass right here, that's why I like the heavy braid, guys, because yeah. without the braid, this grass, and you can see how tough it is to tear. You can't even get it off. If you do get a five pounder, which I fully expect to happen on any one of these casts, then you, uh, you're gonna need all that braid and then some. So the heavy powered rod, the high speed reel so that I can just burn on the fish as hard as I can and get him back out of there. There you go. There you go, see? One's a fluke, two's a three, three's a pattern. That's the third bite we've had in that inside edge. Look at him go, surfing, surfing, surfing. Got to. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, buddy. Well, these ain't the Giants Lakes known for, but that's about as fun as you can have catching bass <laughs> right there, throwing them back up in there, short of five pounders. And there's pretty much no other lure that you can fish like a weedless frog, you know? I mean, there just isn't. There's nothing that comes over the top of that like that. And then you can just make it dance or whatever. Stop it on the pad. Stop it, pause it in those little holes and it just floats. You know, you can, that's how I tend to work it more often than not, is relatively quick. But you gotta be able to make accurate casts, obviously. You gotta have heavy, heavy, heavy equipment, even for little fish. One of the biggest things that I learned when I frog fished is once you set the hook and you get their heads up. Yeah, wind. Keep your rod tip up high, yeah. grind, grind, grind. Just yeah. keep them coming. And I think that first wad of grass that you get on there, in a whole bunch of cases, uh, that first wad of grass that gets the fish holds them pinned. Yeah, they don't flop the one, around as no, much. No, it holds them. It holds the, the fish and the... Here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. Ooh, got that's him. a good one. That's a good that's one. That's what I'm talking about right there, guys. That's, that's why I, I get out of bed. I got the net, because this is a that good That is one. why you get out of bed in the morning right there. That fish can be waking from way back there. That's a good one, Chad. I don't think he's giant, but. I think he's four or five pounds, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there he comes right there, buddy. There yeah, you go. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that thing. Dude, <laughs> it doesn't get any better for this old Florida boy. Than that right there, for to have that fish come from that far <laughs> he away. It. There's a five pounder. <laughs> Booyah. All right. 
get up there, go ahead and pull, and then uh, flip, flip the, uh, over on that side, flip it to auto. I got a throttle. Okay, thanks. And we're just going boxing for a minute, guys. We'll get this picture in a minute, but, you know, uh, that inside line, we figured out that inside line's got fish on it. Well, I started looking, there's holes all through here. I threw the inside line. I got halfway back across that mat and I could see the fish barging all the yeah, mat out of the way. Waking. And he's just trying to figure out how to get through all that grass to get to my frog. And as soon as it hit an opening, he swallowed it. Yes. Boom! <laughs> that was a good one. Fishful Thinker Television is brought to you by Camp Chef, the way to cook outdoors. Peterson Toyota and Toyota Trucks, moving forward. And Colorado Parks and Wildlife. And you guys will know right away, we're making really long casts. And the reason we're doing that is this water is super shallow and super clear. So we know we're fishing for much larger than average fish. And we know we're in crystal clear water. And we know it's not even two feet deep, not even close to two feet deep. So the last thing I want to do is get too close to my fish. So we're going to keep out away from our fish a little bit. And uh, we feel like that that'll help us maximize bites. That, do you agree with me? In places like Powell, any place water is real clear and you're fishing for big ones, uh, distance can be your friend, don't you think? Yes, absolutely. And other times I'd consider, let's say we do a lot in like Kansas where the water's really murky. Well, in that situation, I feel like you do better to have your bait close to the boat a lot because you have better control. But here, you won't get bites up against your boat because the water's so clear and the fish know you're there. And so that doesn't pan out as well. Yeah, how lucky are we though also? I mean, frog fishing, when you think of frog fishing, you normally generally think of Florida, yeah, Louisiana, Mississippi, Louisiana, Texas, yeah. yeah, not in Colorado. <laughs> not in the mountains in Colorado. No, we, we, could, we could go skiing this afternoon if we wanted to. Or, no, but uh, we could certainly go elk hunting. Absolutely. We're in some of the best elk hunting terrain. I mean, a lot of guys come to Colorado to hunt elk. We have the biggest elk population by a large margin of any state in the country. And Pagosa Springs right here where we're frogging dirty right now. Frogging is, dirty. Is uh, one of the best places in the state to hunt elk. Lots of them down here. The state record elk from Colorado came from not too far from here, a little town called Creed, if I remember correctly. Okay, right up there on that mat, right there. That's it. I'll just sit and watch for a here second. Here he goes, here he comes. Oh, oh my God, oh. a giant! I just, I, dude, I was fine, I knew you were there. I set that one straight up. <laughs> there you go, line just moved back to the left and there's another one. Now the thing is, I know any one of these can be big. I just missed one a second ago that I don't really think was a lot bigger than this one. But just for the record, I timed that hook set just fine. Yeah. And I knew you were there. He's worried I'm going to take his head off one of these hook sets, and I swear I won't. Well, you're, we're setting for 10 pounders. <laughs> I'm doing the same thing, and I'm afraid I'm going to kill him. No, we're good. We're good. The thing, now, let me show you guys my rig here real quick. Um, I've got, if you guys watch this show very much, I've got my standard pitching bait, which is a 4 out Havoc Pit Boss right there. I've got a half ounce bullet weight and it's pegged with a rubber sinker right there and it's ahead of one of the new uh, Berkeley Fusion 19 four out flipping hooks, straight shank flipping hook right there. And I've got it on 50 pound braid, trilene braid. I've got a 7.4 medium power, uh, heavy power uh, fast action rod and, uh, and then the 7 to 1 Revo SX. So it's a good Deal. flipping combination right here. The question only then is, can you detect the bites up in those bushes like those fish are? And they are all the way up in there. Those bites are coming all the way in there. And I know one of these is gonna be a big one. So you fish here a bunch. And we're, let's reiterate guys, we're on a relatively storied fishery here in Colorado because it is the home of the state record largemouth. 11 pound, six ounce largemouth came out of this lake. And uh, and so you've been fishing here for a while now. What's, what's the story on, on the fishing here? I mean, is fishing still as good as it was? Is it a different type fishery? Why do you suppose there's so many big largemouth? This lake just sets up, I mean, you don't have a lot of, a lot of tules like this at this elevation. You don't have crystal clear water. You don't have hatchery stock trout. You don't have bluegill, crappie, yellow perch. We've seen catfish, we've seen there's just 
so much forage for them. And Not obviously, to mention springs. You're right, yeah. And you know, it's, it's, this lake just sets up as a really good bass lake, even at high elevation. We fish here a lot, we come here a lot. Um, in between tournaments and stuff, we'll, we'll come over here and, and just kind of brush up on something that we make. There you go. This is a bluegill. <laughs> is it really? Good yeah. Lord, it's another one of those Blue. giant green sunfish. Yeah. Dude, those are some serious green sunfish right there. He ate that thing too. Look at that thing. <laughs> That's crazy, dude. That's a, those are big. No wonder there's good bass in here. You green sunfish to get that big. Fishful Thinker Television is brought to you by Sportsman's Warehouse, America's premier outfitter. St. Croix Rod, best rods on earth. Camp Chef, the way to cook outdoors. The thing about this lake, we've talked to how many people here at Echo Canyon this morning, a half dozen probably total between everyone, maybe not even quite that many yet, but every single one of them is here catching trout. Yeah. No, which, which is what Colorado's famous for. It's weird because this lake is, is a really excellent trout fishery and not that many people know about the bass that are in here. And Even the though it's held the state record since like the mid 90s. Yeah, exactly. I think 93, 94, something like that. So yeah, it's got a super healthy population of nice sized well, bass. Well, how many, how many trout have we seen crows around in the bass cover? Oh, all the whole bunch. So they are eating, they are, the bass here have a lot to eat. Even though they have a short growing season. But I also yes. think that those springs probably help under the ice, the springs that are in this lake probably help keep water moving under the ice, keep the fishery a little bit more, um, oh, what's the right word? I don't even know what the right word is. Just keep the fishery a little bit more vibrant during the winter, you know? So what just, I do notice though, Chad, what I do like about this lake is, um, in the, in the spring when the ice comes off, you do not see a, any, almost hardly any fish kill from over the winter, you know? You'll see what I would consider normal, fish here, fish there, you know, just for sure. natural mortality. Uh, I would bet that's from the springs. The state wildlife areas in Colorado, um, I think are a lot of the sleepers that people don't realize. You know, Two Buttes State Wildlife Area down in Southeast Colorado, another fantastic place to fish that a lot of people don't realize because it is kind of remote. There's so many, I mean, there's what, 42 state parks and how many state wildlife areas? And there's so many of the state wildlife areas that are really good to fish and that people don't realize what's in them, you know? Places even like Trinidad, big smallmouth in there down southeast or down south central Colorado. Either a bird or a big old fish just moved in there. Yeah, I saw that. Dude, I know for a fact there's a giant right here somewhere. Yeah, you can see now uh -huh. how close, you how still thick see. that mat was that he blew up to, to get that. There you go. No, oh, that ain't him. <laughs> nice catch though. <laughs> nice catch. When it moved, uh, I was like, dude, oh. I thought, oh man, he got him. <laughs> What's that? It's a monster. Oh, he's wee though. Little buddy. There's one right there. Is it? Nope. Not a, no, that's a Bobo, I think. See, my jerk bait's getting about half the bite. smashed him. Yep. Holy crap, there's a lot of these in here. That's okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, it's really not okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Chris is playing on the fact that they're known for the size of their mouth, not the size of their brain. I see why I use them big poppers. Not no shortage of those in this pond. What we're looking for. What's that model number on that popper? I need to get one of those poppers. Must be a real sense of rod if you can feel that one. If I'm still catching bass, that's pretty good though. I don't know how big he is, but he just came up and got it on the outside edge right here. Uh, it ain't much to him, but <laughs> I want to see it. But not, not to it, not not six inches, two pounders. Two pounders, all right. Let's see. Ooh. Landed right on a feather. Yeah. It's the old. You and your feathers. The, oh. Actually. 
look like the feather. Look at this tall my, grass right here. Tried to eat my bluegill. There you go. There you go. A trout. Is it a trout? Mm -hmm. I'll uh -huh. give you credit on the call though. <laughs> no, it's a bass. It's not a two pounder though. That's not a two pounder. Sorry. No, not a two pounder. Nice but throw though. Oh my gosh. No, because I kept my rod down and out of the way so that you could cast. Boomer. Here he comes. Yeah. Got him. There we go. That's a good one too. <laughs> I mean, that it. <laughs> Oh, dude, we got another V waker. <laughs> you can see him coming. Oh, that's so awesome, dude. Thank you for the network. There you go. Yeah, Good nice call. One. Come on right there, baby, in the big old net. Look, nice doom, doom. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about, guys. How about that? You Came down, we went, we just said 30 seconds ago we were gonna leave the deep water full of dinks, get up in the shallow water, because that's where there's some bigger ones. Nice, Mr. Johnson, we're gonna get this thing put back real quick here, guys, because that's a pretty fish, ready, buddy? There you go, buddy, back in your crystal clear water. Look at that, look at that, oh, look at that. Pretty oh. Nice fish, Chad. So yeah. many state wildlife areas and state parks in Colorado have fantastic bass fishing. This happens to be the one that holds the state record. We didn't catch those, but man, we caught some beautiful fish. Great day. Super high elevation, frogging. <laughs> um, Colorado's got some fantastic bass fishing. Get out and check it out. Chris Johnson. Thanks, Chad. Thank you. Always a pleasure. Chris Johnson, check him out. He's uh, one of our favorite guys. Check us out on social media. We appreciate it. Hope you'll tune in, and we'll see you next week. Time now for today's best catch, brought to you by Bird. Here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. Ooh, that's a good one. Look at that thing. Dude, <laughs> it doesn't get any better for this old Florida boy. Than that right there for to have that fish come from that far <laughs> away. Berkeley, catch more fish. Ooh. I didn't even feel a bite. I just uh, looked down. And my frog was swimming underwater. <laughs> so this, we're, oh, there we go. Let me get the jungle out of the boat. Got him. Oh my God, dude! How did that happen? Because if I didn't duck when I heard that, <laughs> you would have. Be digging a six out out of my face right now. No, it's only a four out. Those don't okay. leave near as big holes. I need a helmet and some pads. <laughs>